What's going on guys, Victor here. And first and foremost, let me say Happy New Year because this is probably the first video you guys are seeing in 2020. Now, I didn't make an intro for today's video, but we're opening up something very good. I'm gonna be making barracuda. We got all sorts of spices, herbs, tomatoes, onions. The kitchen is gonna be smelling good in a little bit. So let's go fishing and then I'll see you guys back here later. Alrighty guys, so first thing, like I said, we're doing is catching bait because in order to catch a sailfish, we really want to have live frisky baits. And we already have one in the live well. Now this I think is going to be a blue runner. Oh yeah, perfect size bait, exactly what we want. So this is a blue runner and I'm going to get in the, in the live well so that way he lives well, but look at that. Blue runner, also in the live well already we have a rainbow runner which I don't want to bring them out because they're a little fragile, but it's that bigger one over there and we caught them at the buoy earlier. So this is what we're doing. In order to get these baits, there's a patch reef. We're right outside of Hillsborough Inlet in 30 feet of water. Very clear, beautiful water today. You guys know me. I love my little jigs. This is a little Mustad bucktail jig. I'll have it linked below. Mustad just came out with a, a bunch of bucktail jigs. So I'm trolling this around and then I have a Mustad sabiki on that one. And we're trolling about six knots and just looking for the blue runner school. I literally was putting this one out so we could start trolling again. Brooke didn't even get up to her speed. We got another one on. Oh, a little AJ. This is a little lesser amberjack. So this guy is actually undersized. You cannot keep this. If it was an Almaco jack, you could, but this is the lesser amberjack species. So way undersized. This one feels bigger. Well, Much I, bigger. I just saw a bird flying down on stuff getting blown up in the water. So maybe. Or it's foul hook. Could be a mac or something. Oh, you are right. It is a mac. I know. I know. Well, I know. it is foul hook, but you were right about that. So we're both right. We got a sailfish on a mackerel that. one time. We have. We're gonna let him go though, right? Or my grandma can use him for crab bait. Does she want it? Yeah. Okay, Brooke's grandma, you got crab bait. It's going in the cooler. Okay, this one feels like the right species. Blue runner. I told Brooke, this is the last one and we're gonna go start to troll. Oh yeah, it's the right one. But it's the same br discussion I have in my brain every time. When you're catching bait this fast, it's like you just don't wanna stop catching them, you know? There you go. Do we go or do we stay? What do, do we, we do, bro? Do we stay or do we stay? Do we stay or do we go? Let's do one more. One more. Captain Brooke says one more. Number five. We did it. You said this is the last one. Are we going to stay true to our word or are we going to keep fishing? I don't know. This is a pretty If it was up to your dad, Brooke's dad is a big. We got enough bait, oh, let's get out there. That's the opposite of Brick and I. Well, we only have two hours to fish. So I'd say we go out. Yeah. Yeah, I think we got enough. You guys don't want to spend a bunch of money on bait. Come out here with those little jigs I showed you. Throw them along the patch reefs, take them to buoys, wrecks. You catch yourself with plenty of blue runners. All right, guys, we got our bait. Now we're in 90 feet of water. There's a wreck I really want to slow troll by because not only are we going to put out uh, baits for sailfish, which have fluorocarbon, but we're gonna try to catch a wahoo too. We're gonna to put out a, that rainbow runner and I'm gonna to try to get him to swim down a little bit more. So this is a bridle rig, which you got. You guys will see it. It's better if I show you than try to explain it. I got our blue runner. I got a rigging needle. I'm gonna go right through his nose right there. I'm gonna pull it through so the rubber band goes through there. And I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna get my hook point in the other side of that rubber band, twist it a couple times, and get, go back underneath the rubber band. And now what we have is billfish, such as sailfish, they have big mouths. They like to swallow their baits whole. And for a circle hook to work effectively, you want maximum hook exposure. And since we're slow trolling these guys, now that there's not a big fat hook in them, he'll be able to swim better, more naturally, and they'll just, it's a better presentation too. All he has is a little nose piercing. That's it, a little nose piercing with a little rubber band through it rather than uh, heavy gauge steel hook. So Brick's gonna put the boat in gear. Okay, 
So Brick's got the boat in gear, and we're just gonna situate ourselves. You pick the bait you want out furthest first, so in this case, it's gonna be the Blue Runner. This is a triple hook rig. I got a big Mustad Big Gun hook and two Mustad Trebs connected by little swivels. If we catch something on this, I'll explain why I do what I do with this. Since there's a lot of hooks flying around, you gotta grab these guys. Like, your child is hanging off the side of a cliff and you don't wanna let him go. So we're gonna hook the first hook through his nose right here in the front. That way he swims nice and streamlined, okay? Then we have another treble hook. Hook right here in the side of the skin. Our third treble hook. Right here, right here towards the tail. Okay, you pull your wire tight, make sure that there's nothing tangled. And in the water he goes. And these guys are extremely fast. And also very sensitive, so you gotta get them in the water as fast as possible. All right guys, first fish on the bridal blue runner. No idea what it is. I'm gonna spin the boat around so I... Kind of swam straight at us. Feels big and dense though. Woohoo, look at that! Wow. This I thought was the blue runner with the bridle, um, with the blue runner, but this has wire on it, and look at that, that thing's running. So this is the. This is what we. This is the rainbow runner. This is the rainbow runner. This is what we thought would have caught a wall. It's got way to it, that's for sure. We thought we might have caught is a barracuda, not a wahoo. But check that thing out. Look at that one hook right there. Careful. Uh -oh. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Now we have his head with the treble hook. Oh, Ooh. there we go. Okay. See you See later, ya. dude. First. Oh man, that's a, gotta be a fish. Swam straight towards us. Really? Yep. There he goes. There he woke up. Realize he's hooked. This one really didn't know he was hooked. I don't know, but it's funny how things happen all at once. You no know, bites for about an hour, and then all of a sudden, back to back. I see it. Is it long and skinny? Long. Looking like a gouda. It was his bud. <laughs> his best buddy. All right, barracuda number two. You know what? I'm not gonna have a bad attitude. You shouldn't. Look, we didn't catch anything, and now we, we caught two fish in a row. We did. I'm gonna grab this one. Why don't you leave this in the rock? Watch this. You grab them right here underneath the gill. No harm done to you or the fish. On the outside of the gill, though, in the gill plate. That circle not, hook. Not in the gills. Not in the gills. If you guys look, a lot of people say, "Why are you holding them in the gills?" My hand is on the outside. It's just holding the hard gill plate. That must that circle hook did exactly what it was supposed to. Barracuda. Hold them up sideways. Nice, healthy barracuda. Upon further review with my Captain Brookie, we're gonna keep this guy for a catch and cook. Eaten barracuda in the past, they're very tasty. So this guy's going in the cooler. He's not gonna see another day, except in the bottom of the frying pan. His friend earlier got lucky. And not so much. No more bites after those two barracudas, so just enjoying this beautiful sunset with my beauty. Take a look at this. So, we'll see you guys at the house. Alrighty guys, get a load of this mouth right here. Barracudas always fascinate me when we catch them. They probably have some of the gnarliest teeth. I wouldn't say the sharpest compared to a Kingfisher Wahoo, but as far as big and just ferocious and things that could really tear and mangle a bait, they're big. And the neatest thing about them is every single Barracuda has this one tooth on the bottom of its jaw and there's a hole right here in the upper part of its mouth and it always completely closes. It's like a, a glove. That one tooth always fits perfectly in there. So I always thought that was really neat. They're a very stealthy, um, fast torpedo shaped predator, big, powerful broom-like tail. And today they're gonna be dinner. 
So let's knock off one of the sides of this Barracuda. I'm going to be using an 8 inch Dexter. Links below and you guys can always remember you can save 20% off all Dexter products using my code Landshark. Links below or at DexterOutdoors.com. Now let's knock off the side. So what we're going to do is, starting over here by the head, I'm just going to go ahead and go from the top down around the pec fin to the belly. Just make a cut like that. And now we're going to go ahead and just outline our fish going from the head to the tail and just marking it with the tip of our knife. And a nice sharp knife really helps. You guys can see how easily this knife glides all the way down. Now we find the bone, the backbone, and just ride all along it. Now we go over here and break through these pin bones and get over that rib cage. And then when we get to the backbone, we go on the other side of it, push down. And we just continue and go over this rib cage, meet right here. And there you go. There's one side of your Barracuda, and you guys can already see some really white stuff. Alrighty guys, all we got left to do is take the skin off of this Barracuda. Now I know it's very popular to eat Barracuda staked, which we probably would have done if this was a smaller guy, but this was a bigger Barracuda, so I'm just gonna fillet him. So nice long strides, hand flat, and left hand always trailing. Just like that, take it off. You see all this red stringy stuff in the bloodline. It's probably the least appetizing part of the fish to most people. And that's another reason why we take the skin off of these fish. Okay, now always towards the head half of the fish, you got some pin bones that we're gonna remove. And I always feel around because they don't run the entire length to the tail. They usually stop about halfway. So you go on both sides of the bloodline to remove those pin bones, just like so, they're in there. Brooke's gonna feed our pet scorpion fish. So if you're wondering where the rest of the barracuda is, in here you got the head, the guts, the tail, the backbone, all of what we consider the waist. And guess what, Brooke's grandma, they call her mom mom, she goes stone crabbing, she goes blue crabbing, and that's gonna be the crab trap bait for, I don't know, a week or two. That woman goes crabbing every day, so we really try not to waste anything. And then all these little scraps, straight back into the canal, getting to feed the fish. Now, I don't know about you, but that certainly does not look like trash to me. It's just as firm as a snapper or mahi would be. Not too bad of a bloodline. I'm not gonna cut it out because we're gonna eat it fresh tonight. If I were going to eat this in a few days, I would certainly take that out. So, get excited because we're gonna whip up something good. You know we are. I'll see you guys in the kitchen. Here's my vision for today's video. We got the barracuda cut up into two separate ways. We got little chunks like this, and then I have more, something you'd see in a restaurant, something you get in a restaurant, like a nice three ounce piece of fish. We're gonna prepare it two separate ways. I'm gonna be making a curry style sauce, my own homemade garam masala. Uh, I got all the spices here, I'm gonna explain everything in a second. We're gonna poach this fish in our coconut curry, and we're going to pan fry this fish and serve it at the very end so it's nice and hot. You got two different flavors and I just, I really, what I want to emphasize is the no trash fish, just trash cooks. And just to show you guys that you can make something like barracuda gourmet and good in two separate ways. So first thing we got going on, we're gonna start on our curry sauce. And Brooke's parents just got here. So we got a live audience tonight. Saute pan, canola oil. This is two yellow onions. So for the pan fried fish, I'm gonna pre-season them and let them marinate a little bit. We're gonna do salt. And I'm definitely getting into my comfort zone today and we're doing a lot of different seasonings. I've attempted making curry once in the past and hopefully this time's better. So salt, pepper, chili powder. Mm. 
Now, key ingredient, turmeric. Okay, same thing on the other side. Okay, so both sides season with turmeric, salt, pepper, chili powder. Now we're gonna go into just a light dab of cornstarch on both sides, just to give it some texture. I'm not pressing them in, I'm just giving them, just to make them a little firm. Okay. Um, final touch, a little bit of lime zest to go on top. It's gonna smell great. Okay, I have garlic and ginger. Our onions are nice and brown. We're gonna add a ton of ginger and then ton of garlic for about one minute and then I have some tomatoes I'm going to put in next. And over here, what do we got going on, babe? Well, we finally got this beautiful bar in our house. You guys were saying, you need more stuff on your walls. <laughs> and we've been waiting to get this and we finally got it. And we are making margaritas tonight. With what? Where'd you get those margarita glasses? Um, some nice man gave them to me for Christmas. Do you live with this man? This, this one's gonna be good, Mom. This one's for you. Oh, and I think it made more. Yeah, I'm gonna redo yours again. Cheers. Cheers. Let us know if we're as good as bartenders as we are crooks. Yeah. Yeah? That's good. Okay, so Brooke's making some margaritas over there. Have some tomatoes now. Putting them in. And I only cook the garlic and ginger enough to where you can really start to smell that oil pulling those, like the, the flavor and the aromatics out of the ginger and garlic. have sweated enough, nice and soft, released all that water. So now we have a ton of spices, turmeric, nutmeg, uh, coriander, cardamom, I don't know if I butchered that, cumin, chili powder, salt, pepper. Um, there might be something that I'm missing, but now we're gonna go ahead and add all of these to our, now we're gonna add all of these to our tomato onion mixture. So chili powder, I'm not sure. I think it's probably coriander. There's a few things that look very similar. Nutmeg, oh, there's also cinnamon going in. Turmeric. Salt and pepper. And some more stuff. About three quarters of a cup of water. So, yeah. Well, I took all your ice and I added it to her drink uh, and it's getting just right. Add, uh... Okay, I have some fresh chopped cilantro. That's gonna go in now as well as later for a garnish. And then the combination of zucchini and squash. We're gonna cook in our broth. Good mix. So the zucchini and squash is also going to release a ton of liquid, so I'm not worried about not having enough for the fish. Okay, second barracuda. This is the one that was marinating with the turmeric and stuff. We're going to lightly pan fry. It's going to crisp up. If 
you knew how good this house smelled right now, doesn't it, Brooke? Yeah, it smells really good. So fragrant. So many just good herbs and spices going on. There's our barracuda. Super firm. Look at this. Doesn't fall apart whatsoever. Cornstarch crisp up very nicely. Now wait till you see how we dish. Wait till you see how I dish these guys up. Okay. So everyone's gonna get some rice. Okay, everyone gets two pieces of fish. No? No, they do. Oh. Well, Brian will get two pieces of fish. <laughs> Man, my math was off. Thanks, bro. <laughs> we'll do a little flip. Okay, so now look at that beautiful curry sauce. So good. You got the zucchini. Wait, unsteamed? Zucchini, squash, a little piece of fish. We're just gonna put that over there like that. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. Get some on Look the rice. Look at that. Oh yeah. All right. To the Man, table does you that go. that look good. Barracuda never looked better. <laughs> you have the wonderful, fragrant jasmine rice. We get some jasmine rice. We have our cornstarch coated, very beautifully seasoned barracuda. And then now, as the star of the show, we have the homemade curry sauce with some poached barracuda, zucchinis, squash. Okay, and the finishing touch, I almost forgot. Some fresh coriander to go on top. No. Cilantro. No, it's coriander. Depends on where you are in the world. Some people call it coriander, some people call it cilantro. Oh. Yep. So, so good. The curry sauce, honestly, I actually haven't taken a bite of fish. Hold on. <laughs> I've just been eating the sauce and the vegetables and the rice. It's really hot. Mmm. <clears throat> really, really good. You did a really good job on the sauce, Vic. Thank you, bro. You saw how many seasonings went into that way? Mm. Really good. Okay, I'm going to try the other one. The um, pan This too. one I'm not sure about, but it should be good. Mmm. It's like a crispy skin. Is it? Yeah, it's really good. Very start good. One? I've been eating my fish and um, I'm trying to decide whether I like the one better that was sauteed or the one that was fried. And, um, I really can't say one is better than the other. They're, they're both really delicious this way. So, good job, Nick. Thank you. Mama? I'm really surprised. Um, people always throw barracudas back. It's so white and beautiful, actually. Um, but I'm enjoying it. And this, I've never had curry. And it's also awesome. Mm -hmm. um, uh, mm -hmm. Very good. Two things together are really, really good. Thank you. I, I think, think that's, that's the awesome. Best, that's the best talking you've ever done. <laughs> I know. That was awesome. Good job. Yeah, it did add a whole new flavor to fish. All these seasonings. We don't usually season them up quite that much, and it added a whole new different flavor to it. Watch. I'm gonna show you something. Watch, look at this, the like flake of this. You see it? It's mm -hmm. nice, look at that. It reminds me of like grouper or something. Yeah. Like the, it's yeah. it thick with, yeah. flakes. Mm -hmm. It's firm. Yeah. Not fishy. No. Like Victor had told you guys, we were going out there trying to catch sailfish and then we caught those two barracudas and I was like, Victor, why don't you do a barracuda catching cook? <laughs> Might as well. And here we are, and it's really, really good. So I'm glad that we still got something to eat. All right, you guys. I'm gonna let them enjoy their meal in peace now. It's my turn. I'm gonna try the curry sauce first. 
with the rice. Mm. So fresh. So flavorful, so aromatic. That's the word that comes to my mind when it comes to curry, is aromatic. It's the smells, and it like opens up your nostrils. It's just so good and vibrant. Now we're gonna go for a little poached fish. Or no, that's, that's a zucchini. Here's a little poached fish, lightly sauteed. Nice white flesh. You never know you're eating barracuda. I'll tell you that right now. Now a little bit of the crunchy with the cornstarch. Mmm. I like that one. You do? Mm-hmm. Which one? I love the the flavor. Which one? The one with the cornstarch with the turmeric and the chili powder and I the, like that one more, but I also like it with the sauce on it. Mm. So with the sauce? Mmm, that one is so good. Aside from it being barracuda and it being curry, I'm definitely gonna try that spice blend on a future dish for sure, because that's it's like artificial skin. It really is mm -hmm. so good. So, some zucchini. Good. So, we're starting, we're starting off the new year right. And the mantra of this channel has always been to never turn your nose up to fish and to just try different things and to get out there and you could literally create any type of recipe you guys want. It doesn't have to be a high dollar fish. Try a barracuda once in a while. There's a reason there's a regulation on them now because people do keep them. Like we're gonna continue to keep keeping them and all around. Very good, thank you guys for coming. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like it, give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in that next one. And look at this. Is there more, Victor? Yeah. <laughs> huh? Uh -huh. There always is. I'm getting more. <laughs> see you guys.